Europe is facing a serious energy crisis, which is causing a lot of problems for people and businesses. Energy prices are going up, and that's making it harder for everyone to afford the energy that they need. This is contributing to larger national debts and slower economic growth. You've heard this all in the news. Recession, 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 right? Well, one of the main reasons for this crisis is that the prices of the different types of energy, such as oil, natural gas, and coal are not matching up. Governments and energy companies are struggling to deal with this and it's causing prices to go up even more. We'll talk more about that in a second, so just hold that thought. Some governments are trying to reduce their debts, promote economic growth, while some businesses are lowering their prices to help, if you can believe it or not. However, it's not enough to solve this crisis. It's fundamental right now at this point. The rising energy prices are causing inflation to go up as well. This is making it harder for people to buy things. Some businesses are struggling. In the UK, for example, shoppers are cutting back on their spending and retail sales are falling. All of this will be covered today. To solve the crisis, Europe needs to take urgent action. This means investing in more energy sources from different areas, managing their actual energy usage better, and promoting economic growth and stability. If these steps are taken, Europe can reduce the impact of the energy crisis and inflation. The question is, will they be able to do that? We're gonna answer some of that today. Ultimately, when you look at Europe, you have to compare this if you're an investor or maybe it's where you live. Is this the right place and the right time? For a lot of people in Europe, the answer is no. Now let me show you something. UK inflation eases, by the way, eases the 10.1%, but food prices push higher. Incredible. Incredible to see how high this has gone at this time right now. We're talking about Europe generally everywhere basically having a inflation target of two percent and none of them are at two percent some of them are at four percent and five percent others are at ten percent the cost of food continues to rise with the prices increasing by 14.6 percent in january the largest increase in over a decade According to experts, they say that inflation could remain high for the foreseeable future, putting pressures on consumers and businesses alike. Just think about what has to happen with interest rates to get that to come down. They have to get this to stop, and the only way is higher interest rates. And when you do that, of course, you're going to slow down the spending that happens both with the consumer and the businesses as well. So this is big. Just look at what happened in the past. What happens when you increase interest rates too much and they stay there for a period of time, not you know there for a few months and then it comes back down. This is recession. That's what occurs every single time. Even members of the Fed acknowledge this. So we have to look at the next part. Well, that is UK shoppers slash their spending as price rises and energy bills bite. It shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. But of course, if things are too expensive, people can't buy more. I don't need to spend too much time telling you about this, but it is in fact going on right now today. It's not as if, well, I wonder what's gonna happen. This is the actual data and it's showing you that right here and now. That's for the UK. And uh, you know, for some people though, they're spending more money than ever before. We know that. They're pulling their money out, they're going to Dubai. They're pulling their money out, they're going somewhere else. Like in, for instance, in Italy, a lot of people are leaving the UK, for example, and they're going to Milano. Why would they choose Milano? Because it's a European city. Maybe they have an office. They work for a financial company or whatever. They have an office in Milano. So they can say, okay, I'm going to open up. I'm going to go to that office. I'm going to have a house that's half the cost. And I'm going to have just a lower cost of living overall. And maybe, you know, it's you know, relatively similar in so many ways and all these things. So that's what's going on. So there are cities that are still cheaper and people are starting to say, you know what, maybe I'm living in the wrong city in Europe. So this is important stuff. UK efforts to deal with energy crisis raises the risk of missing net zero target. So all of these countries, whether we agree with it or not, have gone towards this whole net zero target. 
And at this point, they're not going to be able to get to that target if they have to continue using coal and if they have to use, um, you know, all these different types of energy that suddenly became popular again during 2021 20, and, and so on. Well, of course, we'll see what's going to happen. The reason I mention this is that there's all these like different institutions, not just on the government side, but above government, supranational entities that are kind of forcing governments to go towards this. And if they don't, I believe there's going to be punishments, maybe extra taxes. Maybe they say, oh, you know what, we're going to put austerity on the country and the country is going to put the laws in. It's not going to be the supranational entity, but they kind of punish those countries for not doing what they said they would do, for not meeting their goals. And that means you get less. Do you see what's happening here? You have to pay more, but you're going to get less. I wanted to just highlight that. I want to bring that to you. I don't want you to realize that when I bring you these data, these pieces of information, it's because it directly impacts you. You've got, you know, you go to the store, you buy, let's just say chicken. You say, hey, that chicken is a dollar more than it used to cost. You know, this grocery store, they're ripping me off. But what you didn't realize was that that chicken has a carbon tax on it and it's not directly taxed. Like you're not going to see it on your receipt, but it's built into the cost, just like it's happening on your gas, just like it's happening on everything else. They're implementing these things and they're going from one level above governments. Okay. What about this? When the economy gets squeezed by too little energy. Now, this is an interesting article to get into a few things, uh, but I'd like to just show a, you one aspect of it and, and just, you know, to, something to think about, let's just say. In the article, it explains how the world economy is dependent on energy, particularly fossil fuels, and how the economy's complexity is directly related to the amount of energy available. As the amount of energy available per person decreases, it becomes more difficult to maintain the complex systems that are currently in place, such as transportation and electricity infrastructure. This can lead to an economic contraction, increased conflict, and other problems. They also discuss the loss of complexity that has already begun, and one example being the supply chain disruptions. Well, we need to understand that there is a relationship between the energy and the economy, and the potential consequences of not having enough energy to support the current system. Now, there might be an abundance of energy, actually. There might be much more than we need. The question is, how much are we being given? How much are we allowed to access? That, that's the difference. Like, real and contrived and, and so on, of course. But it's interesting. Because if we're not focusing on getting our actual energy energy demands met for one reason or another, well then, how does that impact our lives? Direct impact. And I believe in our future, it will be very much what the World Economic Forum has highlighted for us. And that is we're going to get less, we're going to pay more, and we're going to have to get used to living in very small places or living with, you know, 15 people at a time, all these different things that sound quite dystopian, if you ask me, but that's the way that, you know, they're, they're saying it. They're making it very clear that this is the agenda. EU to tell member states to start reining in national debt. Well, the EU is urging member states to begin doing this, it comes at a time as the bloc is recovering from 2020 and attempting to boost growth. The European Commission is expected to release a new economic policy guideline, and I do believe some of that information is going to come from above. Higher authorities, your governments do not decide things anymore. Of course, this comes from a higher level. And that's unfortunate because they don't have your best interest in mind, right? French retailers agree to margin hit to curb food inflation. I couldn't believe it, but I guess they don't want their windows smashed and all kinds of things. But if you can believe it or not, this is actually happening. Discounts are going to be available, available to people. What's going on in France right now? They are rioting. They are upset. And so they can't take it anymore. 
raising the age of retirement, pensions not going to be there for them. Like all of these things are happening. And of course, this is having a direct impact on the economy as a whole. Gunvor chief says loss of Russian gas will cement U.S. export role. Very important development here. And we could agree to that. Essentially saying, hey, if Russia is just not going to be a partner to um, you know, Europe anymore, if that, if that kind of thing is just cut off, well then, the U.S. is going to benefit from that because the U.S. can supply Europe with the energy that it needs, at least for now. Because you got Qatar coming online 2026 and you know what's going to happen? They don't have any other means of getting energy. So the U.S. is probably going to provide a lot of that. So it will be interesting to, to see in the near future how that comes about. But we can look at the fact that Europe needs, really, really needs to figure out their, figure out their energy situation right now, big time. Russia remains India's top oil exporter for the fifth month in a row. So along with this, uh, we can see that there are some countries that have really been cozying up to Russia. And one of those being India. India saying, hey, we're going to do business. They're offering a cheaper price. We're going there. And that's something that, you know, they're, they clearly, clearly have beneficial ties with Russia with the other BRICS nations, even if they don't really see eye to eye ideologically. And you know that Russia, China border, or Russia and India border is not exactly the safest one. I mean, I think it's worse than what's going on in Mexico, US, um, but it doesn't seem to matter that the countries are saying, hey, we're gonna do business where things seem like we should be doing business. And right now, Russia and India are really ramping up their distribution of this and in this case anyway with oil this is another one that just really quickly the bank of russia will not find room to cut interest rates in 2023 as increased budget spending has raised inflation risks so certainly you can see this because with this particular country they have dealt with a lot sanctioned heavily and there are a lot of things that are happening that cannot be resolved in a short period of time because as this war continues on between Russia and Ukraine, they're going to have to um, deal with the sanctions and that does have an impact. There's no doubt about it. So that means, by the way, the reason I mention this, what's going on in Europe will still continue because until Russia, Ukraine gets resolved, Europe and Russia is not getting resolved. All right, and then we have Russian crude heads to UAE as sanctions divert flows. So once again, we have these different countries that are stepping up to the plate to be partners right now. And they're saying, hey, I'm going to get the cheap crude. Why not? It's there's, there's no way that they're going to go in any other direction. They're going to be they're not just going to sit there and say, we're going to wait until these sanctions are lifted. No, they're going to go out there and they're actually going to try to make business deals as best they can. So very, very important right now to look at the UAE, United Arab Emirates, becoming an important market for Russian oil. So it's not the only one, but certainly that has become an important one, to say the least. So that's really what I wanted to discuss for today, looking at Europe, looking at the costs are rising, looking at inflation, all of these things coming together right now at this time. I hope you enjoyed this video, found it informative. If you did, hit that subscribe down below because each and every day I'm going to bring you the latest and greatest information and stay tuned very, very soon setting up my email list so that we can actually get the videos to you because you know that uh, for, I think it was based on the poll that I did, about 70% of people do not get notified. So we're going to do that, set up the email list. Stay tuned for that. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.